Hi and welcome back to the channel and to this first video of the new video series on the topic of Hager Cut. Now in this video series we will take a look at Hager Cut and we will see how we can create a documentation for our electrical installation with the help of Hager Cut. And even if it isn't directly associated to the functionality of a building automation, it is however necessary to have a good documentation of your electrical installation. And after the intro, we will see how easily we can create such a documentation with the help of HagerCut. Now in order to install HagerCut, you first of all have to visit the website of Hager. And I will link this URL down in the show notes below. And here you can already see HagerCut.pro. We simply click on download now, which will get us to this part of the page. And here we can click on download HagerCut. Now this download might take a little while, depending on your internet speed. What we can already see is that HagerCut.pro is free to use. First of all, there is an initial 30 day trial period. And after this 30 day trial period, you simply have to request an activation code, which you can do from the software itself. Therefore, the only thing that you need is a MyHaga account, which you can create here when you click on this icon here. Now, after downloading everything, we can then start to install HagaCut onto our computer. So now that the download has finished, we can start the installation process. You now might get a message by Windows, which we will just ignore for now. And after that, the installation process starts and we can simply click through it, accept, accept the license agreements. And then we will use the default folder. Now here, make sure that you check this technical documentation. These are all the PDFs which are associated to the products. So with that, you can then simply open up those manuals within the software and you don't have to download it manually from the website. So next, and then we can start the installation process. Now that the installation process has finished, we can start to open up HagerCut for the first time. And the first thing that you will see is the activation of the software window here. And we can start first of all with the 30 day trial period. And after that, we have to activate this program or our license by simply clicking here on activation. And then with this button here, we can create a code request so that we get an activation code, which we then enter here and have the full version of HagerCut. I will use the trial version for now. And after clicking on OK, in my case, I already get to the dashboard of HagerCut. In your case, because you install it for the first time, you should see this general options window here. Now here, make sure that you press here on I have an internet connection without a proxy server so that HagerCut can check if there are software updates available. And then down below here, you can simply leave those settings by default. So I authorize the automatic connection. With this setting here, HagerCut will check every day whether there is an update available and will inform you about it. Then the messaging service here, we simply set up which sort of email program we use. So Outlook in my case, this is so that HagerCut knows your email software so that it can directly create an email. And then down below here, we have the documentation. So the folder of your documents, this you can also simply leave to default. Then I click on OK, and then you should see this window here. This is the dashboard of HagerCut. Here in the middle, we have our project list. And depending on which folder we choose here, we will see different projects. So we either see the projects in the recycle bin, in the archive, the recent projects or this default folder here. But before we go ahead and create our first HagerCut project, I first of all want to set up some settings with you together. So therefore, I go here to tools 
and then to user information. And within user information you can now specify your company. So first of all the address as well as phone number or email address. What you can also do is that you can associate a logo to it so that later on in your diagrams the logo appears on the bottom page and not the default logo. You can do this now and what you should also do is under colleagues, in my case I have already done it, create your own user. So I click here on new and then simply last name and first name. This I will do because later on we will use this created user here so that it will show your name also down below in the bottom of the diagrams. I will quickly delete this new new user here, delete it. And then what we can also do here is we can set up partners, for example, design officers, representatives, etc. This is also simply for documentation purpose so that there we don't have to specify and enter the names every time again. So we can simply create this database here. Then we have the products database. Now by default we only have one manufacturer listed up here and with this tool here or with this database you can create your own devices that we can later on then use in our documentation. So by default Haga of course has its Haga products as well as some products here from this manufacturer and if you have devices that aren't within HagaCut, you can simply create them via an editor, even a 3D model you can import. And then here in this product database, create the product itself and associate the symbols to, an, to it so that we can later on use it in the diagrams. We will also do this in a video later on. Then we have the price list. Of course, by default, we only see the Haga products and down below here services. This is just the mounting time that is needed by Haga to calculate the time that is necessary to build up the distribution or switching board. Now, when you have set everything up, you have to make sure that you save everything and then you can close this window. And then one thing before we create our first project, go here to settings saving and recovery options and make sure that you enable automatically saving. So in my case every 15 minutes HagaCut will save the project so that nothing gets lost when there for example occurs a crash to the desktop. Now that we have set up everything we can come back here to project and first of all I create a new folder. In my case I will name it YouTube. So simply type it here. This is just so that you can find your projects more quickly. And then when I have selected it, I click here on new and create my first example project. And with that, we are now in the project page of HagaCut. Now the project page, first of all, starts at the material window. Here we then have an equipment list so whenever we add a device to our diagrams or to our enclosure we will then see it here so that we can print out this list and order the devices that we need. Based on the page that you choose here so material, diagram, enclosure etc. This window here in the middle part changes. Here in the left hand side this always has the same structure. So first of all, up here we have our project structure. So we can create, for example, multiple boards that we document within HagaCut, or in this case, only one board. And we can also create a sort of a building structure, like you know it maybe from the EDS. Now I will stick here to this Q1 board, and maybe later on we will create another one. Then down below here we have the documents part. There we can see the documents that get created automatically or for example for the diagram page when we draw them. So these are the documents that you later on print. And then down below we have here this properties part or window. 
corresponds to the item that you have selected. So now in this case, it shows me the properties of this board. When I click here on the example project, you can see it shows me the properties of the example project. Now to start creating a diagram, we simply go here to the gut diagram window and then we get prompted so that we choose which type of diagram we want to create. Now there are basically two options. First of all, we can create a single line diagram. This means that all the live wires and the neutral wire is represented as one single line. While multi-line diagram means, you may have suggested it, that each live wire and neutral wire gets drawn as a separate line. And this is what we will use in this and the upcoming videos. And here you can choose between an assisted and a manual multi-line diagram. So assisted means that we have sort of a table view where we simply drag and drop the devices that we need into it and Hagakad automatically draws the necessary lines between it. While manual multi-line diagram means that we draw those lines by hand. We will start with the assisted multi-line diagram and then later on we will convert it to a manual diagram so that we can then draw more specific things the assisted mode just can't draw. But I would recommend you to use this assisted diagram mode as long as possible. But don't be worried, you will see what I mean within this and the next videos. So we will start here with assisted multi-line diagram. And then the first thing that should appear is a window where we can specify how the bottom part of those pages should look like. So I will stick here to type A. Then here, this is the description of the circus. I also stick to the default option. And here I have already changed it earlier on. I will use the company headed cartridge, which is the first page of your document. Also here on next, and then we specify the incoming. Now here we have different options between a non-project location, so a board that isn't documented in our project, or we can use a board within our project when we already have created it, for example. And we can also specify some other options here. Now I will stick here to non-project location, and I don't use a second incoming. Therefore, I click here on OK, and then I have to specify the non-project location, so the incoming. So first of all, the earthing system, I uh, will use TNS. So we have neutral and protected earth separated. Then the network type, I will use a three phase with neutral. You could also use single phase. Then the voltage is automatically set to 400 volts. And the only thing that I can change now is the rated current. So in this case, the current, the circuit breaker in this non-project location is set to. Now I stick here to 63 amps. This might be an other value in your case, but for now this really isn't needed. So just stick to your value that you have here. And then we can click on OK. And we are prompted to this diagram table. And this is where the magic happens. Here in this window, we will place the devices that we have within our switching board. And based on this, HagaCut will draw the diagram by itself. But what do I mean with this? Well, let us take a look here. First of all, here by this error, you can see the incoming. So the incoming that we just specified. And then this black line just is the current path. So here we have this current loop here where we can place devices, three devices in total. And then down below here we have multiple rows where we can place, for example, circuit breakers or RCD devices. And then when we place them down here, we then have here the circuit that we create. So before I talk too much, let us check that out. So in order to place down, for example, a circuit breaker, 
I mark this first free field and then on the right hand side we have this catalogs window. It may be that this catalogs window is already active in your case. Uh, in my case I have enabled here this auto hide functionality with this pin here and what that means is that this catalogs window disappears when I don't need it and if I need it I hover with the cursor over this catalogs field here and then it opens up. And here within this catalogs window we can choose the devices that we want to place down. So therefore we first of all st want to start with the circuit breaker. So I go here to board devices then modular protection devices so for DIN rail mounting and then here we have the miniature circuit breaker which we want to place down. Then first of all I have to specify the values now in my case 6 kilo amps to 10 kilo amps with one pole 16 amps and a B curve and then I click here on the screen plus symbol so add it to our diagram and now you can see here we have our circuit breaker and with this black line here you can see the circuit itself. Now what we could also do is for example place down an RCD and behind the RCD then the circuit breaker. So let us do that. Therefore I mark here this next field, click on catalogs and then to find the RCD we go here to residual current circuit breaker and there we first of all have to specify it. So for example 4 poles instead of 1 with a current rated for 40 amps. The type of RCD I change here to A and 30 milliamps and then I can add it again to our diagram here and then I want the circuit breaker itself behind it. So I mark the next free field, come back here to catalogs and configure the circuit breaker that I want to have. So again 16 amps, add it and with that we now have an RCCB behind it and circuit breaker and then our circuit itself. But how does it look like now in the document itself? Well therefore to see it we have to go here to diagram and there you can see the automatically created diagram. So here we have our current path with the current loop and then here we have our first circuit breaker, here the circuit itself and here on the right hand side you can see our RCCB and behind it the circuit breaker. And this is how easily and quickly you can create a documentation for your electrical installation. Pretty simple, isn't it? So that's that for this video and the introduction into HagaCut. I want to make a cut here before in the next video we start to work on a real example project which I will show you then. And in this example project we will create a complete documentation also with KNX devices and also a documentation of our enclosure itself. So be excited for the next videos. I hope you enjoyed this video even though it might not be directly associated to building automation itself. If so, consider a like and subscribe to the channel to get notified for the upcoming videos. And I'm excited to see you in the next video.